Leszek Kolakowski was a prominent Polish philosopher of the 20th century. Brought up in Radom, Kolakowski experienced life in Poland under both Nazi and Soviet occupation, at first growing up with affiliation to the Communist Party and Socialist worker groups. Later, Kolakowski renounced communism and actively spoke up against the Soviet Union that occupied his home country, leading to his exile from Poland in 1968. His most well-known work, Main Currents of Marxism, is a sizable book in which Kolakowski discusses all things Marxism and the Soviet Union. He was later called the physician of totalitarianism by his peers. His later works were increasingly focused on religious questions and ideas. I've chosen this video to talk about a 1983 essay that Kolakowski has written, called Totalitarianism and the Virtue of the Lie. In part because his commentary on ideology is as relevant today as it ever has been, despite the security we often feel, and in part because of how it deals with the importance of genuine truth. A central argument Kolakowski makes is that totalitarianism has to function on the machinery of some form of sick, twisted lie, only to be brought to its knees by the correct use of truth. So we should get into the essay. The essay outlines the aims of totalitarian regimes and how they attempt to enforce their legitimacy through oppression of free thought within the society and the repression of truths that could be deemed counter to the state ideology. He begins by pointing out that although totalitarianism has no true empirical equivalence that we can say perfectly matches something such as that of Plato's Republic, we can nonetheless distinguish totalitarian societies from other historical societies in a useful manner. A totalitarian state has the ultimate symptom of state ownership across all things and people. It could be enticing to think that totalitarianism is a product of the mad, insatiable power drive of corrupt individuals. But Kolakowski points out that such power struggles are universal, whereas totalitarian drive is not. Some deeper rationales can surely be found in hindsight. Whether or not theocracies and old epochs can be labelled totalitarian, modern totalitarianism has clear links to a form of socialism, Kolakowski writes. Nazism and Italian fascism have, may have been bastard offshoots, but the similarities can be found in the idea that social control of production and distribution would increase welfare and efficiency and eradicate unearned income, although this phrase has never been thoroughly defined. The first half of the essay mainly deals with these types of questions. What philosophy can we find in these regimes in hindsight that we can say was the basis for a totalitarian system? He points out that anarchist writers unendingly attacked Marxism in the 19th century as a program for unabashed state tyranny. But what were the factors that made this a reality? Well, the first thing a totalitarian system needs is a justification, both for their ideological confidence and their desire to seize power. Kolakowski is quick to point out the links between historical determinism and these events. He writes, in both cases, the overriding ideology stressed the idea of social justice and proclaimed that some chosen parts of mankind, a superior race, nation or class, had the natural right to establish uncontrolled rule by virtue of historical identity. For example, in Nazi Germany, the Germans were superior by right over the Jews because of the historical context of the Jews in Europe. The proletariat were less morally corrupt than the bourgeoisie class and due to their oppression had this historical right to overthrow them. Political slogans in the 20th century employed envy to win over their followers. Not only this, but such political envy became synonymous with justice. Where one group had been perceived to benefit unfairly in the past, the oppressed groups were justified in taking revenge in the present. Thus the political goal became the destruction of an elite class, aristocratic, meritocratic or intellectual. Kolakowski points out the connection that egalitarian components of a philosophy would no longer truthfully survive after the seizure of power. So to reaffirm the legitimacy of the favoured group or class that is to take over, it is important that the ideology can explain and account for everything. And the harsh fact is that this is very near impossible. Every time you think you've got a system that can account for everything, whether it be in the political landscape, or a religious landscape is almost certainly do dogmatic and almost certainly has its own shortcomings. However, this is a direct threat to any ideology, so it has to reinforce its claims with power. Kolakowski writes, It is self-evident that no modern society can dispense with the principle of legitimacy 
and that in a totalitarian society this legitimacy can only be ideological. Total power and total ideology embrace each other. This is an obvious pathology of the communist regimes. Rank and the ability to follow the communist ide ideology were largely inseparable. There were no spaces for alternative views that could be harmful to the party's wishes, and a murderous echo chamber had to be employed to defend the legitimacy of the party's claims. The ideology is total in a stronger sense than any religious faith, at least in its claims. Not only is it supposed to be infallible and obligatory, its aim, unattainable fortunately, goes beyond dominating and regulating the personal life of every subject to the point where it actually replaces personal life entirely, reducing human beings to replicas of ideological slogans. This brings us on to the second half of this essay. Humongous. Humongous what? That's what it is. Humongous, Humongous what? Is that sexual harassment? It is easy then to see how the lie plays its role in the totalitarian system. Ideology must protect itself as infallible. It must replace the real world with its own truth. All people must fit the nature the ideology intends for them, otherwise it would collapse, and their individual selves must be eroded. The lie's function becomes so peculiar and creative that the word lie itself seems inadequate, Konakowski writes. Common across the totalitarian societies of the 20th century was the effort to eradicate history and wipe out any books and material that may have been counter to the authoritarian state goal. In Orwell's classic novel 1984, there is a Ministry of Truth, in this Ministry of Truth, the staff spend their time thoroughly destroying records of the past, replacing them with new, up-to-date and corrected versions. Once the ideal has been reached, people remember only what they are taught, and that too will change tomorrow to protect the overarching ideology. The ideology, in its quest to become infallible, has to be able to offer an explanation for all things, including those that seem at first to con contradict the ideology. A constant series of denial and goalpost shifting is an inevitable symptom and a good indicator of ideological possession. Consciousness is memory, as Bergson would have put it. Creatures whose memory is effectively manipulated, programmed and controlled from outside are no longer persons in any recognisable sense and therefore no longer human. So how can it be that totalitarian systems have so much success in keeping themselves alive? despite the fact that they are so fundamentally flawed. Well, a primitive social philosophy often governs totalitarian machinery. The common societal good has priority over the interests of the individuals, and the individuals can be reduced to the social whole, a convenient foundation for any ideology of slavery. This is especially the case with the Marxist doctrines. It is easy to see that as long as we give the state everything, the state promises the deliverance of a utopia in the near future. It also gives a scapegoat for the current problems in the world. If it were as easy as it was made out to be, to deliver ourselves from our oppression and into the hands of a utopia, then it is no wonder so many people chose to cling so tightly to such a belief. In the essay, a story is told of a guide at an art museum in communist Poland he was on a tour, and the guide told him that they didn't display bourgeoisie art, but instead kept them in a cellar, so that one day it could be shown how far bourgeoisie art had deteriorated. A few years later he found himself on tour with the same guide, but this time the museum was displaying the bourgeoisie art. The guide said, Did you know that the bourgeoisie press accused us of hiding this art from the public? This was because at the same time, some rooms in the museum were temporarily closed and a bourgeoisie journalist was there at the time and made this ridiculous accusation. It could have been the case that this guy had actually believed what he was saying. The line between correct and true becomes eroded. One doesn't have to look far for modern equivalents to see how this thought remains in our culture. Many now claim that math is racist, or that getting a correct answer is partaking in some form of racial supremacy. Even the ethical integrity of something as concrete as statistics are called into question, if it could reveal any incorrect truths. Tools that are objective, or supposedly objective, may be dispensed with, despite the fact that they reveal truths, because of their incorrect nature for a political goal. So how is it that totalitarian states can come to an end? Kolakowski describes totalitarian ideology like a fortress, constantly trying to defend itself from the outside truth that it hasn't been able to account for. Any ideology is a shortcut in finding truth, and to find genuine solutions to our problems will require 
taking in the outside knowledge eventually. Totalitarian states can only function, therefore, in relatively stable conditions. Once instability occurs, the lost nature of individuality is called for as the cure. It is only this that can deal with new and novel situations in a correct manner. Humans will always strive to regain their rights, given a sufficient opportunity, and their historical conscience will prevent them from becoming slaves to an ideology. It is truth that causes the eventual decay of totalitarian systems, and the state will start to reveal its pathology and illegitimacy through its acts of violence. Alexander Solzhenitsyn was kept in the Soviet gulags, where he witnessed their abhorrent nature firsthand. Once he was released, he wrote the Gulag Archipelago. His attempt to reveal the truth about the Soviet Union undoubtedly played a role in its collapse. Likewise, Kolakowski's work was an inspiration for the Solidarity Movement in Poland, a movement that played its own role in bringing about the collapse of the Soviet Union that occupied his home country and eventually led to his exile. Thank you for watching.